Hi friends, today I will continue my bridge series by creating a curved box girder with varying heights in the Revit Adaptive Family environment. Let's get started by opening up a fresh Revit Generic Adaptive Family template. So here we are going to design the cross section of our box girder bridge. I have chosen straightforward box girder with just two parameters, A and T, illustrated in this image. I have kept it really simple to save time and to not make this video too long. But the principles we will cover apply to more complex cross section as well. I will be using my trusty epic pen, let's sketch our cross section. This will help us highlight the key points and parameters needed to create our masterpiece. So the purple lines represent our first nested cross section component, while the green dots indicate our adaptive points. To achieve the variable height for the box girder, we are using two adaptive points instead of just one as we did before. From these adaptive points I have added hosted reference points which will form the cross section. Now the orange line represents the second nested component which will serve as the void. As we discover in the previous bridge video, creating a hollow section within the same family isn't feasible, so we will create two family, one containing our void and one containing our form. Our lovely sketch is done. I've selected our work plane. The work plane is like our canvas where I will place out our adaptive points and the countless reference points that will form the cross section. I have now used the reference points tool and placed out a reference points in the 2D view, snapping it to the center of the reference planes. Once placed, I select the reference points, I make it adaptive. Before placing the reference points, I set the work plane on the adaptive point. This will be the XY work plane which will decide the direction the reference points can move. So the work plan I just selected gives me the desired moving direction for the reference point as showcased with the pink line, the set direction. So very important to pay attention to the selected work plan. But since this is a, an adaptive point, I didn't really need to host it to the other adaptive point since the point in itself is a placement point and will be used to place out the family. But for the reference points, I will need to use this technique I just described. But what is an adaptive point? It is a modified reference point in a generic adaptive family. When a reference point is made adaptive, it is a placement point by default. Geometry drawn using these adaptive points results in an adaptive component, which basically allows us to have infinity family forms with different parametric values and help us create more complex design requirements. In contrast, to the classic family editor where there are more restrictions. As you understand, the adaptive points are a key difference from a regular components created in a classic family environment where you normally have one unique insertion point, two for line based families. Here however, in adaptive components, the family geometry relates to more than one insertion point, very often. So in essence, the adaptive points are free form in nature by utilizing points and lines to create the geometry while the classic family creator uses reference lines and dimensions and notations to restrain the geometry. So in our bridge example I will use the adaptive points in the nested adaptive family, which is the cross section, to place out and connect it to a point in the host family. Ok, this is a lot of information and might be a bit confusing, and I have been waffling about adaptive points for too long, back to our family. So all our reference points on the sketch have been placed out using the technique described earlier. Select the correct work plane on the host point, which could be either a reference point or an adaptive point, to decide the offset direction for the point. So next up is the creation of all the parameters and formulas that will be able to change the cross section geometry by changing the, the numerical values, making it a parametric design. I only have two parameters that the user will be able to change, A and T, the rest will be parameters based on those two parameters. So it's always a good idea to have a solid parameter system with logical naming and placement of the parameters, making it easier for the next person to use and change it if necessary. Important to note that I do make these parameters instant based. The type based isn't working for the nested adaptive component. All the parameters that the end user might want to edit I place in the category dimension. And the parameters that will contain formulas and basically are driven by the dimensions and user based parameters are placed in the other category to signalize that these parameters are not changeable and will only work in the background of the family.
Now, let's get into the formulas. These aren't very complex. For example, x bot length is the user defined value multiplied with 2 as the picture of the cross section at the start of the video show. And the xt simply represents a negative value for the thickness t. So, when typing in the input value t, these numerical values won't be negative. The formulas handle this by just multiplying the thickness with minus 1. All done with our parameters. Now I need to associate them or connect them to the reference points. We select a reference points, go into the properties menu, find the offset built in parameter, and all the way to the right there is a little button. Press that and a list of all the created parameters appears. Select the correct parameter for the reference point. One parameter is connected, and you can see that the reference points change position. We do that with all the reference points and connect them to the newly created parameters, making our cross-section fully parametric. Let's talk a little bit about the reference points. So a reference point can help build, orient, align and drive geometry in a conceptual design, like the design I'm creating right now, and a powerful tool for designing plot lines, splines and forms which I'm demonstrating in this video. I will use the reference points here to create splines between points that will form the outer lines for our solid cross-section, the purple line in our sketch. I select two reference points and press the spline through points tool and a spline is created. I do that around the whole cross-section and forming the solid cross-section for our box girder. The box girder profile is finished. It matches the sketch and the purple lines perfectly. We save it on the desktop and open up a new adaptive family. So this will be the host family for our two nested components. We again save the family once more, but this time I will save it as the void. Let's uh, go ahead and mark all the points and check off the driving curves built in parameter in the properties menu. When I do that, the splines are gone. I now form the splines for the void that are inside the box girder and I load it into the host family. Alright, we are now standing in the host family which is a new generic adaptive family where I have loaded in the two nested families, the bridge cross section and the nested void that will cut out the hollow section inside the cross section. I then place out three reference points on the XY work plane and, may, and make them adaptive and create a spline through them. Remember, the adaptive points are placement points and will be used to place out the bridge in the Revit main project and will decide the length and curvature of the bridge when the user places out the three adaptive points. But before that I need to set up our bridge itself with the wiring height option in the center. I continue by placing a reference points on the spline, making it a host of the reference points. It knows it will snap to the spine when I hover over it and it turns blue. When placed, the reference points are noticeably smaller, meaning they are hosted to the spline. The three reference points in the middle will decide where the increased height or thickness of our bridge will be, and the placement will be parametric, so the end user can decide both the thickness and placement of the section with the increased thickness. So the three reference points in the middle will decide where the increased height or thickness of our bridge will be, and the placement will be parametric, so the end user can decide both the thickness and placement of the section with the increased thickness. So what I do now is host the three reference points to the spline and then carefully select the work plan on each reference point so I can host another reference point to the reference points and get the desired moving direction, in our case that is the set direction, in the built-in offset parameter which I will later connect to a user-defined parameter. When we select the hosted point on the spline, we can see that the points are being measured by the normalized curve parameter. This is a number between 0 and 1, saying how far along the host curve it is placed. If I make that 0 0.5, it means it is halfway along the curve from the end of the curve. And this number can be associated with a parameter, which I will do. So let's go ahead and set up our parameters. We do have nested families, so the parameters that exist in that family need to be set up in the host family as well if the intention is that the end user is going to be able to change the parameters in the nested families. 
So the thickness big parameter rela relates to the maximum thickness of the increased thickness part of the bridge, while the thickness is, well, the normal thickness of the bridge. Let's add a thickness big n parameter with a ta data type set as number. This parameter will decide how long the expanded thickness of the bridge will be along the spline. I do type in some numerical values before creating the formulas for the parameters I will create in a second. The next parameter is the placement thickness big. This parameter refers to the placement in percentages along the spline where I would like to have an increased thickness or height for our cross section. I will connect this parameter to the built in hosted on spline point normalized curve parameter, which I just explained how it works. And this parameter data type is set to number, and that is very important. Finished with the parameters that the user can change. Let's move on to the support parameters that will contain formulas and help us parameterize our bridge. The first two will be attached to the points on both sides of the placement thickness big point and, as mentioned, decide how long the expanded thickness of the bridge will be along the spline. These parameters will contain formulas and will be at the mercy of the user-defined parameters placed in the dimension group. I place these non-editable parameters in the category other. The x thickness parameters are basically a negative value of the user defined thickness parameters in the dimension category because we do need to offset the host of the reference point in the negative set direction from the top spline to achieve the desired thickness for our bridge. It is a straightforward formula multiplying the thickness with a minus one value. With the first set of parameters creation out of the way, we exit out of the family types dialog box and jump back into our 3D view and start connecting or associating the points for the bot spline with the newly created parameters. To associate the parameters with the point, click the point, go to the properties menu on the right and scroll down to the built-in parameter offset. On the left is a small button, press it and find the correct parameter created just a couple of seconds ago. This point is now parametric and can be controlled by changing the numerical value for that specific parameter. Do the same for all the points, but remember to be precise and make sure to connect the correct parameter to the correct point. I will add six more points and parameters. These points will smoothen out our bot curve. Normally, I would have constructed this curve in Dynamo to get it smooth, but for the simplicity of this example and to stay in the adaptive family environment, I will not do that now, but I might get into Dino and bridge design in a later tutorial. So I've hosted the reference points on the spline. We get back into our brain where the parameters are created. These new ones will be based on formulas and existing user-defined parameters. I place them in the other category. These new points and parameters will move along the spline in relation to the user-defined parameter placement thickness big. So one thing to notice is that this, uh, this bridge needs two splines since our nested components does have two adaptive points or placement points. So if you remember the adaptive point at the top of the nested component will be placed on the top spline and the bot, uh, adaptive point on the bot spline uh, will be placed on the bot spline to achieve the varying height that we desire in this uh, superstructure bridge. While I finish up these parameters and add reference points to our model, let's talk a little bit about reference points. So, a reference point can help build, orient, align and drive geometry in a conceptual design and are powerful tools to design and plot lines, splines and forms. There are three types of reference points. Three points placed on a reference plane and are independent of the geometry. Hosted points uh, placed along lines and splines and geometry edges or adaptive points. When the host moves, the reference points will move with it. The reference point will also move along a host line. In our case, placement of the reference points is at the mercy of the spline, which again is at the mercy of the adaptive point. So we move the adaptive points, the spline moves with it, and the reference points that are hosted by the spline will follow. Lastly, driving. Points, reference points, placed along lines and geometry edges. When the reference points moves, the line on ge geometry will move or distort to meet the point's position.
Finally, I mark all the reference points and create our bot spline. You can see that the bot curve is not perfect, but for this example, I will, uh, I will neglect that and continue. So let us uh, look at our nested void. I locate the nested family within the project browser, dragging them into the 3D view. As you can see, there are two big blue points on this family, and you guessed it. It is the adaptive points, the placement points. The top point will be attached to the top spline, and yeah, the bot point to the bot spline. To make it all a little let, less uh, confusing, I hide the reference points, but the points still exist and are operative in the background, even though we don't see them. But I still need points to attach to the nested families too, so I will create nodes. By selecting the spline and hitting the divide path tool, nodes are applied to denote the position of the points of placement for components. The adaptive points are just showcased on the nested family. I then attach our nested void family to one node at the top and one node at the bottom and hit the repeat tool. The instance repeats on every node and is grouped as a repeater. Click the whole group and press the remove repeater and then create form. And a beautiful void form has been created. Do exactly the same for the bridge cross section family. We attach the adaptive point in the nested component to the nodes. So to make the family parametric, I need to connect the hosted parameters to the nested. So I select all bridge cross section that are placed out and associate the nested parameters to the hosted. We do the same for the void family. So when that is accomplished, I now have a fully parametric bridge superstructure with varying height or thickness at a user-defined place along the spline. I also have a beautiful void inside the bridge superstructure, making it a box girder. I load it into the main project and place out our bridge with the three adaptive points. And as you can see, the bridge superstructure is created. Pretty beautiful, if I must say. But yeah, the material is off and I forgot to create it. So let's quickly jump back to the adaptive family and add uh, a material. Just a small comment on the box girder cross section. The thickness of the flanks does not have the same thickness, just a minor flaw in the design which I will not bother to fix. The video is to show us the, te the technique I used back in the Revit main project where I will start flexing our bridge. Basically, change the numerical values, the bridge's instance parameters to see if our family acts as intended and does not break. So you can see the increased variant thickness acts perfectly. I then change the placement of the increased thickness, yes, that also uh, change position. I then increase the extra thickness in the middle and as you can see the cross-section bridge big thickness increased. So this works perfectly.